Hello, hello from sunny Portugal today instead of Australia. This is my makeshift office with the most gorgeous view. I'm going to do a little travel sketch and try to video it for you in case it's of interest. I've got a very makeshift setup, so bear with me that it's not my usual um, standard of video. Okay, so today I'm going to draw this scene of this cave into a rocky headland. I was loving all of these different coloured foliages and the colour of the shadow getting more intense so that's why I've chosen this. It also reminds me of a walk that we did to the end of the beach here at Albufeira. So this is the longer scene and I've just zoomed into a small portion of it. So I've drawn it up ready to go. You might not be able to see the drawing um, because it, I like it pale but you will be able to see once I start painting. I have two travel palettes with me at the moment. This one that I'm using, I just use if I'm painting back at the house and I have a smaller one for painting on site that just fits into my handbag. I'm going to just pop some yellow tone loosely onto where the um, Gonna move my drink onto where the cliff face has got a gorgeous golden glow. This is a sandstony rock. I'm leaving some little gaps of white. I'm using mostly Naples yellow, but it it is going into um, an area. You can see my palette's dirty, so I'm mixing it over here. There is already some other brighter yellows there from a previous painting. This is all shadow in this section so I know straight away I want that darker so I'm just going to drop a little bit more just some dirty uh, warm colour off my palette. And in here as well up against the shadow the interior of the cave I can drop some of that darker tone straight away. There's a few other spots. Um, this as well. I know it's kind of rich deep shadow. I've been underneath the plants. So it kind of helps me to have that stronger colour. And I want this just to fade off the page, so I'll make this painterly um, at the edge of the sketch. Sorry, fade off the edge of the sketch and not have a straight, straight line. And there's some richer shadow just over underneath this foliage. So I'm going to strengthen the shadows in a second layer. But I always find I may as well kind of put as much information in this first wash as I can just to help find my way. There's a rich colour here that's not shadow but just stronger yellow. Hopefully the sound's okay. The microphone and the camera is above me because it's the only way I could position it. But of course I'm talking facing into my sketchbook. And when I'm working in a sketchbook these are quick loose sketches. I'm not aiming for a ton of um, very detailed information. There's another little piece of rock over here. And of course this is sand so it's going to have a colour as well but I will wait and do that in a little while. My foliage is all different colours and that's what drew me. This purpley plant grows a lot in this area. It's got lovely little flowers at the moment but the foliage is like a deep rich grey colour almost. Um, so it's not by any means a bright green. Oops, I've accidentally picked up some Viridian. That's a bit of a mistake. I might start with the little one above it that's greener just because I've mixed a brighter green, flattened my brush because I want scrappy strokes. 
And what I'm doing is negative painting, so I'm making sure the top edge of this foliage here, the top edge of this foliage I create by making sure this is a broken stroke if I do the foliage behind it. And I've got a nice rich green because with greens I don't like them to be too pale or faded looking when they dry um, and I don't want to have to go over it too many times. I will add usually some more detail into it but I don't want to do another solid green. I'll zoom back out otherwise I go into too much detail. So the brighter green as well is perhaps in this area and this isn't an area of focus up here this is kind of um, leading off my page I'll let it touch that wet yellow but I'm going to leave less white sparkle of the paper in there and I don't want a straight line across the top because I want it to just fade to nothing in the same way And I might straight away come into some deeper colour, so I'll add some indigo into that, down where it meets up with the um, shadow part of the rock. And at the same time, I'll pop that indigo. Indigo is one of my very favourite colours to paint with. Now I'm looking at this muta green here. Again, it's a. Uh, this doesn't. I'm not sure whether you can see that off camera. This foliage here is a brighter, lighter green. This one's a duller, more muted olive with the purple flowers. So I might do this one first. And you can see when I want little thin strokes, I go up on the corner of the tip of the brush or I splay it like that so that I'm getting multiple. But again, I'm up on the tip. And a broken edge where it comes against the rock. And it travels along. You can see, if you're looking closely at my photo, that it comes to a, um, a darker sort of mauvey earth tone, just of dried grass tucked into the the base of it so I will do that while this is wet as well. I might pop a little bit of um, maybe light red mixed with the yellow ochre. And I'm not fully, I'm not doing it like a straight line along the bottom, just dropping it in so it mixes with that green in places. And then I think I'll come back with a dark when that's dry. And again, I'm aiming for it to fade out to nothing, so I'll just have those strokes a bit more intentional at the edge. And it also has some fine thready bits so uh, once I've done the rock I might add those back with my leaf dagger you can see in the longer shot how bright this purple is here in comparison to the same plant below with less flowers it's a little bit duller 
So I'm going to channel that brighter photo. Actually, I'm going to put the neutral green on first. And this is why I love a dirty palette. I can just look and there's a bit of nothing colour up here. There was until I touched into the yellow. Maybe a bit of this bluey aqua. So if you were to say, what colour are you using to make that nothing green? It's really just all the dirty bits around the corner. The corners of my palette. It's quite dark though in the photo, but if I make it too dark I can't get the purple on top. Um, I can't get the purple look to the flowers, so I'm conscious of putting it in lightly first. I'll add the purple flowers and then I'll probably darken up some areas. And I'm not just painting it like a solid shape, I want some little light bits left that follow the stroke and you'll see me picking hairs out of the brush every now and then that just come off the end these um, weasel hair calligraphy brushes just do tend to drop some hair um, if it stays on the page it doesn't bother me it, it doesn't leave a mark I'll flick them off when it's dry Okay. And in my sketchbook, often I'm quite happy if I get little cauliflowers and things happen naturally. I like I like that to make it look more sketchy, more loose. I might just pick up a little bit of the darker bluer tone and put it in some places. And again you can see I'm making it broken at the bottom. The plants don't have a straight edge. So it's quite dark around the, the edge really very dark in around that foliage so this is like a base that I'm putting in now and just a little bit more of that neutral See, so I won't worry about that hair that's on the page and I think that's a brighter green up there I feel like these flowers need some white into the purple, some white gouache. So I feel like I'll come back and add that more defined at the end. But I'm just going to add some purple while it's wet into the green. This is drier down here. So it gives the green a little bit more depth, but it also will give the feeling of lots of little flowers changing the colour of the foliage. And then I'll add some specific ones. Uh, I think I had some rock intended to be there Often in my sketchbook I use just a lot of these water um, brushes and mostly that's because it's a lot of white paper 
um, it's less textured than normal so I find these brushes hold a lot of water um, which the sketchbook paper may or may not need so I'm just mixing a mauve now I'm about to start my shadows here so I'm just mixing up a mauve with um, cobalt and a cool pink so alizarin crimson or I think I had some magenta in there already and the shadows are really interesting to really look at the color so this area of the cave is in shadow it's it's curving it's sorry it's not in shadow it's in the shade so it's it's naturally sh in the shade because it's away from the Sun but then below it we see that that rock face casts a shadow onto the sand so where we see a wall or an object in shade which is this part it, has, it generally has a warmer hue and that's not necessarily just because it's a yellow rock face we'll see more warmth in that shadow color where a shadow is cast onto um, either the wall or say the ground in this case it will have a cooler and a bluer tone to it you can see here it's darker we don't see as much yellow um, we're not seeing reflected light if we look up here we see a lot of um, warmth in that shadow but we also do see some mauve tone if I just painted these shadows a darker shade of yellow to me they wouldn't read like a shadow so I tend to use mauve first and then I drop some yellow um, or some local color which is in this case yellow into the shadow color so you'll see me do that when I get down here into this cooler one instead of dropping yellow in I might drop um, cerulean blue okay, I've mixed my shadow color and if you normally paint with me you'll know often I add Naples yellow to that I'm not doing that in this case because I've already got yellow on my paper and I'm going to drop um, another layer of yellow into actually I'm going to go back to my bigger brush just to put this on quickly So I'm not painting the shadow on the sand at this stage, I'm just painting the shadow, the rock, the rock in shade in the cave there, ignoring the cast shadow. Sometimes I'll link them in together, but I'll do it after I've got this shadow to a point that I'm happy with, and then I'll, um, then I'll travel that down a little bit and I can manage then to keep it a slightly different tone. So I'm leaving some lights. You can see if you're looking at the photo up close, which I know you can't see on the camera. Um, you can see there's some little highlights coming down and the rock's not smooth. But I'm not going to do all of the shadow, I'm just doing the, the bits that sort of link into this because if I did all of that at the same time this is going to be dry before I come back and put my warmth in. So I've got to go right to the edge of where I put that first darker wash. And you can see already because I've got yellow underneath it it's going to glow through. But what I like to do is add more yellow so this is basically just Naples but I had it in a slightly brighter yellow spot and I can see it gets quite dark up near the top so I'm going to actually add light red by um, Winsor & Newton this is one of my favorite color combinations is what light red does when you drop it into uh, mauve and it's dark down here so that will actually just need a thicker pigment so it stays where I put it so I'm mixing up more mauve just 
just to drop right down in that corner and that might take a second that might take a second layer of colour to get that as deep as I would like there's another darker piece of shadow just in here and it's darker like I said just up in this bit that's also warmer and redder So now you can see if I had um, continued with my shadow everywhere I wouldn't have time to work on this and come back adding the warmth. So I'm adding more yellow into that mauve. So the mauve makes, uh, to me, the mauve makes it read like a shadow. And the local colour of the yellow adds um, the glow to it. I'm going to add more yellow up in here just where it travels over the edge While I've got this colour on my brush, I've picked up a bit of a mix now. It's got some mauve into it, it's got some yellow. So it's probably a great colour mix just to tickle around where I can see other shadows. But you can see it's quite yellow in comparison. So before it dries, I'll make sure I drop just some touches of mauve. And you know this is meant to be a loose sketch in my sketchbook so it's not going to be exactly every mark as it is on the rock face. I just want to get the sense of uneven rock and this cave with the shadow and I think about what drew me to it and it's this beautiful change of foliage and the glow of the shadow. So you can see now I've just got a little bit of a dirty move on my brush so I'm dropping that in. It just neutralises that yellow. I'm really okay with some shadows being more mauve and some being more yellow. That doesn't bother me at all. That's probably too mauve just up there. And sometimes if I show you on this one, I might not put the mauve everywhere. At the moment I'm putting it around the edge. And I accidentally took the, the shadow shape lower than my pencil. So I won't try and fix that. I'll just go with it as if the shadow is bigger. It comes in underneath this plant. Okay, so I've put some mauve down, but I haven't put mauve everywhere over that shape. Um, that's that. Comes out. And a little bit here. Well, I've got it. And then sometimes, then once I've done that, I'll fill the, the rest of the shape with the yellow or the local colour. So if I say local colour that means whatever's underneath. So if this was on green grass I'd drop the mauve then I'd drop the local colour of the green or the grass. Dar slightly darker usually than what I put down first. I'm going to pick up just some more mauve. And just that has a little bit too much of a line because of the time I've taken so I'm just spreading the mauve or the purple into that area. And now just some jiggy jaggy shapes of shadow. 
The colour's gotten a little bit too light, although I quite like I liked it, but in comparison to the rest. Oops. So now that, remember I put the purple but I haven't yet put yellow, so I'll just drop some yellow into that. And some of these shadows are, I mean the rock has different colours as well, so don't be afraid to just drop some yellow, some light red, some change of tone, some yellow ochre in places, just to indicate variation in the rock colour. I just try to make sure I'm not leaving a halo though around this um, foliage. So if I come down as if to touch it, I've got to um, come into the gaps as well. Maybe some light red. And if you want to be loose, hold your brush uh, loosely upright and just dance it around. This shadow at the bottom and in a couple of areas of this gets really quite dark so I'm just going to drop darker colour in before it dries. And this whole area over here was um, in shadow so I will come back. And you might have seen then on the palette I picked up way too much um, pink which is a um, easy thing to do with alizarin crimson it's so very um, strong so I had to make up a much bigger puddle to get it back to a back to a mauve tone because if I put this down like a red violet it won't look like shadow it'll look pink As I did before, I've just left a few gaps in that. That's where I'll start then when I drop the yellow in. I'm chopping and changing a little bit between Naples and yellow ochre. I wanted to just soften where that had formed a line. And this is going to have foliage above it. So now I'm going to negative paint. This is a stronger colour than the green in front. So I'm going to make sure I come in and cut around my, my foliage. So just add some shapes to that. This needs to be much darker in some areas. And there's a lovely red colour up here. And a really deep V of colour down there. This sketchbook is a Hannah Muller one which I haven't used before. Um, I will say I'm not loving the paper. It, it takes a long time. Um, to dry in some cases that's good and in other cases it's a bit tricky to work with Need a few more shadows just within this part here And you might hear sometimes about connecting your darks so, you know, if I do some cracks and crevices that just join 
some of these shapes up, it will be more successful. There's a crevice along there. I'm going to mix up a dark with burnt sienna, sorry, you might have burnt sienna, I'm using brown matter and ultramarine blue to make a really really dark mauve, nearly black. And so within the shadow, now you can see it's really dry, hopefully you're seeing on my palette it's quite a dry mix. My brush um, doesn't have much um, paint, uh, doesn't have much moisture in it. If you go like that through a colour and it stays where, um, stays separated, you're in a good mix to come into a, an area that's not quite dry. And so I'm using a really light touch with this. I'm not painting, pushing it in, I'm just dropping some cracks and crevices, some interesting mark making into the shadow areas. So I'm not doing this yet onto the highlight, I'm looking for where the darkest shapes of shadow are, or where I can see cracks and interesting bits of um, interesting bits of um, like fissures in the rocks and you can see where it softens a little bit more where the page is wetter and it holds its shape where it's drier that gives interest to your work so that's not a problem this has a big crack right through there and so you can see this area is the most recent that I did so it's still quite wet. But as long as that's thick it will hold its hold its area and I would call this a dancing brush. I'm just flicking it around. I want it to bounce around the page. But I want this to be really dark down here. It'll take me a couple of uh, layers to build that up. There's something just dark right there. And a few little darks here and there. So again, where it was drier, it has kept a really hard line. So sometimes I'll just soften one side of it. So I'm softening the side that blends into the shadow if I don't want it to be as strong with a nearly dry brush. Otherwise I would disturb the shape underneath. I would disturb the painting underneath. What's here? There's something through there. And this brush is called a Kazan by Neef. It's a quarter inch. It gives fabulous um, tree branches because it's quite random in its mark making. I'm going to drop some more dark 
in this corner but it's actually a good time while it's just softening it's still damp and I'm actually right under an air conditioner so that shows you just how long the paper holds the moisture Foliage over here has quite a neutral, quite a neutral look to it as well. So sometimes just adding a little touch of red to your green will give you a lovely olive. And it actually has a little pink flower, so I'm going to add the pink flower. Foliage will always be fairly solid though where it sits against the top of the rock so I need to not leave as much white just there perhaps some even darker and a not lovely dark more neutral green that I've added to my palette not very long ago is um, pyrrole green or pyroline green by Windsor & Newton So I'm consciously making sure I don't leave a straight line there. I'm a bit unhappy with that bit. So I'll come out. And now perhaps some pink. I mean these flowers aren't quite as bright as this pink but because I'm putting it into the wet green I'm hoping that it tones itself a little bit. And if it doesn't, I can drop some green or some mauve back over it. Again, random mark making at the edges. There's some kind of pile of dried leaves and things up there too I'm not worried about I'm not going to try and depict that and greener brighter green in that part so if I want bright green look at how gorgeous green gold on its own is And remember what I said earlier, these ones that fall behind have to form the top or the shape of the one in front. So I make sure that's broken and I'm cutting down into the, the plant below. So that was straight green gold and down near the bottom this is the pyroline or pyrrole. I can never remember. So I've got a whole pile of different greens happening, which is what I was after. I'm going to just rub out where I've written the name of the beach. Because I'll do that in pen and, and I, um, I'm not good at following my pencil lines when I do the text. So I love a sand colour which is a mix of raw umber, a touch of a cool pink, so I'm using alizarin, and then this lovely lavender by Holbein to neutralise it. So 
So I want to make sure I don't leave white where it will meet that shadow. Probably would have made sense to put this on before the glasses. And if I'm not going all the way to a border, I like a bit of a diagonal sort of feeling, so I'll get a bit thinner. over here rather than go straight and fill that so it's kind of a neutralish sand color it's not too yellow I used to paint sand really yellow and I look back at those paintings and I cringe So just meeting up to those rocks or grasses, that's going to have a cast shadow on it. And sand generally isn't perfectly smooth, so often I would maybe add just some touches of, you know, something that might indicate shadow or footprints. And you see I've got all these little whites here. I just need to capture those. I could do it with a shadow because there is a bit of shadow under there. But quicker to do it just straight with the sand colour. You always need to look at your work from a distance so I'm trying to see whether that my shadows still need more, but this is pretty close to dry, but not quite. So I might just come over, do a bit more work on the foliage. And there's areas of um, really dark darks within that. So this is where we need to get a tonal variation. So the perylene green will work. Um, I automatically went into a little bit of Naples. I feel like it's quite mauve as well in this, um, this plant here. So I'm looking already for under the, under the mauves is where I see the shadow here, under the flower colour. So I'm just going to put some extra, I don't want to totally cover it, I want to just create some shadows that might be um, you know the, it's foliage, it's leaves it's not solid shapes and so I change brush again, this is a really really old brush it has this really scrappy end to it and that's part of why I like it oh, way too much pink again I think that's because I topped my alizarin up just before I left home that it's just pulling too much out. I'm going to just add some mauve into that. back to green. I've noticed that splotch but I'm just going to leave it. You'll see when I do the rest of the page. Sometimes they're fine and don't bother me. Sometimes I wish I'd cleaned them up. Or well, what would actually make sense is to put my water here. So I'm making sure these are broken shapes. They're not solid masses, they go in all different directions. But there's quite a solid dark in around here. And up against this green, it's really dark. And behind that.
Don't forget as well, the darks pop down in between. You know, you see little bits of shadow that goes down further. And I think foliage is one of the hardest things to paint. Not just when you're starting out, but always. While I've got this same colour, I'll come to the same plant. And I'm just going to do a little bit less down here. If I feel like that's just too dark, you know what's a really nice? Um, just a little touch of lavender into it, or a little touch of um, cabot turquoise also will um, look like shadow. So remember I said this is going to be cooler. I'm not going to drop as much uh, yellow into this where the cast shadow of the cliff is cast onto the sand in front. It's very very dark where the two meet so you can see at the moment that's not that's not the case that's not working so I'm just letting it dry a little bit and then I'll drop darker in there and then I'll soften this side so that it runs up a little bit but remember I said I wanted it cooler so I'm going to drop a little touch of blue just cobalt blue into there there's still yellow, the sand colour underneath, that will glow through. These need a little bit more shadow, this rock here. I can come up and start just working up here, but I'm keeping an eye all the time on that um, level of dryness. So again, a thicker mix of ultra blue and brown matter. And I'm going to put it in some places where I see really lovely darks in the shadow. And then I'm going to soften it out. With a dry brush, with, sorry with a slightly damp brush so I don't do it in too many places otherwise I can't, I don't have time to soften so I'm putting that but I'm also going to increase the intensity of the yellow near it so that the shadow reads a little bit better
So I'm just going to change the tone a little bit, put a little bit of cool in there. So lavender is beautiful. Okay, and this is probably ready now for me to come with this darker mix. I can see it's too wet, so that's why I'm adding more pigment. And I'm actually adding it onto the um, cave wall side. And letting it run into the damp of the shadow. And I'm doing that because I know I need to darken this. Darken this shadow. And so I'm going to do similar to what I did up here and increase the yellow as well. Link those. So I went in, I think, to um, yellow ochre, but with a touch of um, light red in it. Maybe too much light red there, so I'll just come back to yellow Naples and yellow ochre. And I've got to take that all the way to those edges. Now you can see this doesn't look uh, separate to my shadow at the moment. The shadow on the ground looks like it bleeds in, so I keep an eye on this and I keep working it while it's drying. And you know, because I'm videoing this and talking through, I'm doing more than what I would if I was just doing this as a sketch in my sketchbook normally. I'm fiddling more and painting less freely. So I've picked up some um, lavender, you can see there, just to get some lovely cool whitish rock happening in the shadow. Again, my dark got too watery, so I'm mixing some more up out of where there's water. And I need to strengthen the edge. And I don't want to go much darker than that, so I'm going to let that dry a little bit. Two definite shapes up here. They would have been good on dry paper if I wasn't re-wetting that, if I'd gotten that lovely rich um, yellow in the first instance. And so you can see now there's other areas that that yellow needs to strengthen as well. So over here. And I lost my little highlights through here, so I don't know whether this will work on this paper to lift. No, oh yeah. Otherwise I'll add that back with white gouache. And now this part over here has a really dark shape up in here. There's kind of a crevice that comes down and has a shadow on one side of it and then the whole shape is shadowed. 
And so if I've gotten that colour right in the first instance, what I would now just be doing is these little crevices, some extra calligraphy marks of shadow, and then I might just soften like this with clean water at the edge of something that I want to soften into that um, shape. And maybe that will work if I drop a little touch of lavender on the sand side. To match this now I am just going to add a little bit more but not all the way out because I'm wanting it to fade out. There's just so many little shapes and you know it's not smooth rock. I just dropped a blob of water so that'll most likely give me a cauliflower which will give me texture. I feel like these mid-tone shapes generally need a dark somewhere through them. This one's got a crack halfway through the middle and some uprights. This bit's wishy-washy here. Tiniest bit of water. Again, there's a crack that runs up through. And if any of these are, you know, too dry brush looking, just with the tiniest bit of moisture on another brush, just dampen one side of them. So I'm dampening next to it just to smooth it a little bit. But there's a whole pile of texture and roughness in rocks, so. And some of these shapes I've just made a little bit too solid near the edge, so I'm just going to add a little extra broken bit of information into the rock. So I put yellow, I need to then put some mauve for it to read as though it's a shadow similar. And something I really love is just every now and then like a really saturated blue so that's just actually straight ultramarine. I'll soften the top edge of it and generally I don't put this in my palette, I'll um, put it on a separate little palette or dish but I just don't have anything handy so if I want pure white I'll pull it just straight from the tube so these little highlights that I lost at the edge of the cave are important. I won't put them anywhere I know is wet, like I won't put them into that blue even though I wanted to. This little bit of rock has a bit of white highlight. So we don't use the white in lots of places, but just every now and then you can see it. 
or like a little um, sunlit patch through a shadow breaking up a large area of shadow right at the edge of this one I've got a big area there with nothing and there's a whole pile of shape um, just rough rock so I could add I could add some more yellows in there but I'll just wait and see when I look from a distance whether it needs it and so I've used when I want pure white I've used it just straight from here when I want to mix it I'm going to use it over in my palette I haven't come back to this yet so just a little bit of dirty green down near the bottom or creating the top of a around a cluster If this is in shadow, it kind of makes sense that the greenery would be in shadow, but when I look at the longer shot, it's not. It's obviously more forward, but what it does have that I missed is this lovely highlight where the light is catching. Just a bit of rock within that shadow. So sometimes I'll put this shape and then just soften loosely the top edge of it. If I'm not 100% happy with the shape. Or if I want it to soften in. I'm intentionally not going to do much there. Yeah, the white I put over here because I want to make these light purple flowers. Yeah, I've just put white all through my palette. Bad move. I'll have to wash it after the, these segments. They're not mauve enough, not pinky purple enough. Are these flowers. Down here they actually almost look like white, whitish spots, but I know that they were purpley. Pale pinky purple. You could actually flick this off your brush, you know, with a tap. And it's more random. Remember I said some of them actually just look white, let's do the same just with white in a few spots. I 
I'm not sure whether it will work, but this um, foliage here is long and strappy and thready, so I'm just actually coming in with this gorgeous iridescent. Um, it's just called Permanent Green Number no. One, I think, by Holbein, either Holbein or Sminky. And so, just to get some of those. Um, Pretty bits breaking into the shadows. That colour works well. But see how it doesn't blend well into this area. So all I need to do there is just soften that with a bit of dirty water. Or make a bit more of it and make there be some brighter areas if that's suitable to the type of foliage it is. Sometimes that colour with a bit of white will work really well. And so the same, these bits that are sitting down onto the sand. I should actually run the sand shadow under there first. Put just some of those in there. Okay, I'll probably stop there and have a little look, see what whether it needs other things. I will add the name of the beach down here in pen. Um, Praia dos Alame, I think it was called, and you might be able to see I've also drawn a, um, a cactus um, prickly pear over here on my page. So I'm intentionally creating uh, some interest, hopefully, in my sketchbook pages by um, incorporating a few different. A few different sketches. Those um, prickly pears related to this area. They were up on the top of the cliff over the back. So we we walked up, uh, walked around up there, and then we came to the prickly pear and and stood and took lots of photos. So that um, that for me relates to this place. Even though for other people they might not realise why these two pages are linked. But that would be why. And I could write that in the text. I'm, I'm tossing up whether I've got room for an open flower here or just to leave it with the, um, the different stages of the buds, which is what I've drawn here. Okay, so thanks for watching. If you've got questions, let me know. I don't know whether this is finished, whether it looks right or terrible. I might add some more things to it. And if I do, I'll post it onto Instagram. Okay, I have decided um, just to keep going for a couple of minutes um, to finish this. I've looked at it from a distance. I can see um, it definitely needs the shadow just in underneath the, the plant here. Okay, so I'm going to put this shadow down on the sand and because that's a feathery plant I've identified by these long bits this needs to not be a straight line And some more darks in there. It's a bit insipid. It's almost like um, uh, what do you call it? Like a little lavender kind of a like a a long leaf with lots of little bits off it. So I'm just going to try to create. 
just a little bit of that. Probably just made a mess of it, but anyway. It's only a sketch. Now, well, the other thing that I really wanted to uh, change or add was I've got too much white. Um, still showing, and, and the rock has a lot of texture. So I'm just going to drop a little bit more just broken yellow so that the rock is less bright. I'm not doing it like a whole solid wash because you know it's it's lumpy rock. So I still am happy with some highlights, some whites, lights, but I just felt like that was too much. And in some places next to these really dark darks there just needs to be a little bit more tone so that they're not as stark. And I do feel like this isn't as um, strong or um, depicted as over here, but I'm okay with that because it transitions off my off my sketch into the other page. I felt like up here need some little bit of light just underneath that ridge and sometimes on top of these shadow shapes just a touch of white would indicate there's a raised piece causing the shadow underneath so I'm going to use the white gouache just to reinforce that there's something jutting forward before it carves out and I love a bit of white gouache more than I like a lot of masking fluid because I think masking fluid leaves really hard hard edges that are unnatural, where white gouache you can get this lovely um, broken dry brush stroke this feels too solid in here so I'll break it up with a little touch of that and you know I could add some yellow so it's not white white um, but I usually find by the time it dries it's not it's not pure white anyway So remember some of these I'm putting just above the shadow. 